Hey guys, Sim down here. This is giving me my chapter review to My Hero Academia 281 or Boku no Hero Academia 281 plus Ultra. Now, another badass chapter, this time entirely focused on the battle against Shigaraki. The chapter starts with Shigaraki basically, basically telling the heroes and us why he's a villain, reaffirming his ideology. And he goes back to that phrase his dad said to him about how heroes hurt their own families in order to protect complete strangers. Now, his father would have said that from, you know, from his perspective, he would have said that due to being abandoned by Nana Shimura, being the, the previous, you know, the previous owner of or One for All was All Might, and then the previous owner of one for all before that was Nana but fr from his perspective you know Nana abandoned him but what Shigaraki doesn't understand is why it was done why was Kotaro why was his father abandoned by Nana it wasn't done to protect complete strangers it was actually done to protect Kotaro and, and it worked for at least a little while I mean even keeping Shigaraki and his sister off the grid for a hot second his father got to you know go into full adulthood he married he had a child he had two children we're not sure whether all for one knew about him and was just waiting for a good chance to kind of slide in but for, for a while at the very least what nana did paid off and he, he goes on to talk about this is shigaraki he goes on to talk about his own experience how he was left to fend for himself and how the heroes failed him now this is true to an extent we we don't know how much all for one tampered with shimura's memories and or experience of those of those days alone did i call him shimura shigaraki we don't know how, how much he actually tam tampered with shigaraki's memories but shigaraki basically blames these guardians of society these heroes for the people that they can't protect and he blames them for acting like this pain doesn't exist even though we know having seen these heroes having seen the top flight of heroes at the very least that the top heroes are always thinking about the times that they failed and the times when they couldn't do enough that haunts them every time heck even the kids in the hero schools feel this pressure to succeed and not not just for themselves but to avoid the pain of having failed an innocent civilian but shigaraki who romanticizes his ideology by telling the heroes he's not the only one, focuses entirely on his own experience of the world and his hatred for this hero-saturated society, which could do nothing for him in his darkest hours. And his response to to this then, what what, what does he think is the best cause, uh, best cause or best response to this? The heroes and the system are corrupt and he will destroy them both. That's, that's the way he wants to go about it. And we, we've known this for a while. That's kind of in the whole thing since the since my hero began but he believes that humanity this this is this is really interesting he believes that humanity has been kind of mollycoddled by hero society making them dependent on those with strength so normal civilians the, the masses are dependent on heroes because of their strength because of their quirks but because those with strength because the heroes play at this game of being heroes they create a society which proliferates the idea of needing to be protected so it's a vicious cycle and circle almost and what he refuses to understand is that number one Heroes can't be at all places at all times. There are probably hundreds of people that they fail every day. The only thing they can do is try their best because they're only human. And number two, in any society where there is some sort of force designed to protect the masses and are employed to do so, there will be an expectation from the masses to be protected. That isn't necessarily the fault of the of the weak, if they are weak, or the common people, or, or the strong and the powerful heroes. That's just how society works. We all play to each other's strengths and we're paid for the services we offer that shigaraki sees this as kind of shepherds guiding their sheep but not letting the sheep know that the shepherds are actually sheep themselves and shigaraki has looked way too deep into this and he's arrived at the complete wrong conclusion but that's one that he's, he's willing to stick to and bet his life on however twisted and childlike shigaraki's ideology is he also doesn't care about how wrong it may seem to the heroes this is where we get that awesome panel of him saying that's what makes us heroes and villains and i was like oh oh like your your, your reasoning may be completely flawed but you look like a badass saying it. And Endeavor decides to fire off a shot here at Shigaraki, who moves with the speed of a mongoose, dodging Endeavor's attack and threatening to land a deadly strike. Gran Torino steps in, slamming Shigaraki to the ground, only to get caught and pushed to the ground beneath Shigaraki. Gran Torino's life flashes before his eyes as he thinks back on Nana telling him how she had her family records tinkered with in order to erase her connection with her son Kotaro, Shigaraki's dad. We see how much this, this hurt her as she cries her eyes out to Sorahiko, who is actually Gran Torino. Gran Torino wonders if he and Nana made the right decision to, you know, to, to, to tamper with the, her family and whether abandoning Kotaro was the right decision as Shigaraki lands a horrific blow to his midsection 
uh, blood splattering all over the place. Like, if this isn't the end for Gran Torino, this, the guy's got a lot more vitality than I thought because this, this was a horrifying shot. I felt so bad for Gran Torino at this point and for the, for the heroes and the kids around him, but this is this is what I expect to see, and this is why I've been getting annoyed with One Piece, actually. I've recorded both of these reviews back-to-back. In My Hero, this is a very serious situation with serious consequences. People mess up and people get messed up. That's how it works, and unfortunately, Gran Torino pr- paid the price, but in One Piece, it's just like, oh, you know, with Sanji joking around with King, I'm not sure the hell that was about but you know i just i just want to see more of a concerted effort by oda to make it feel serious to, to make it feel like people could die like gran torino here like I, we've been on the edge of our seats because we've we've seen all these death flags for aizawa for endeavor for for freaking anybody that's been there to be honest maybe even president mike maybe even shigaraki maybe anybody that's there we've all been like oh my god this guy could die at any moment and now someone looks like they've paid the price someone looks like they've died and i'm not shocked i'm just like holy shit it actually happened and i'm I'm, I'm happy about that i was a little taken aback by how much energy shigaraki still has left i was like this is kind of very shonen you know like the guy was on death's door a few seconds ago and now he's he's moving at the speed of light he's able to punch through ryukyu's hand and stuff like that i'm like really and the guy was basically burnt toast a few seconds ago but it looks like to me he's digging the deepest he's ever dug before and he's right on death's door and he's basically he's gone into that mode where you're fighting to survive and trust me you can you can reach you, you, you either just black out and you don't know what the frick's happening or you can reach new levels of strength when you go into this this area like there have been multiple times in anime where we've seen stuff like this so this is the most dangerous shigaraki we've probably seen to to, to this point without the use of his quirks and in rage deku and bakugo try to blitz shigaraki who instead goes straight for aizawa ryukyu intercepts with shigaraki's fist going straight through the palm of her hand deku lands on shigaraki's back trying with all his might to restrain him as endeavor tries to land one final vicious blow deku actually gets a vicious blow uh to the to the stomach uh, an elbow actually but continues to channel his rage into restraining shigaraki while all this is happening shigaraki pulls out the quirk erasing bullets from his right leg pocket remember remember that and then takes aim at aizawa who stood relatively close to him and this does not look good and has me pumped as heck my this this, this is this is also what oda needs to do a bit more of i understand where we're probably still in the phase where oda wants to lull us into a false sense of security but his action chapters need to actually progress the story a little bit uh narrative wise something horikoshi seems to be a master of like we we knew that shigaraki had these bullets on him but there's been so much action we've kind of forgotten that and all the while in this action-packed chapter he reaches into his pocket pulls it out and now he's aiming it at at aizawa the person who's raising his quirk at the moment so i'm just like this this all ties in beautifully and i just i just wish oda's action-packed uh chapters would do a little bit more of this where the story comes flooding back in my only gripe with this part shigaraki pulls the bullet out of his right hand side pocket on his leg with his right hand and somehow the bullet ends up in his left hand which was stuck through Ryukyu's, Ryukyu's hand. How the heck did he transfer it from his right hand into his left hand when his left hand is through Ryukyu's flesh? Like there's no way he would have got it there unless he flicked it to himself which I, I really I really doubt. You know it, it doesn't really make sense to me. How did he actually get that that bullet up there? That's the only gripe I have but what do I think is going to happen next? God knows. Gran Torino has a bust leg he has a busted midsection he probably has a hole in his midsection right now and he's currently bleeding out if not already dead he could probably dive in front of this bullet if he recognizes it in his dying moments i'm not sure if his eyesight would be that sharp with that amount of blood loss uh saving you know he could save aizawa and use his remaining life to stop all for one one last time in the sense of you know saving aizawa's quirk Makio would probably then roll in to see a roasted Shigaraki and save him while he's in a dire state, something which he heals from as they escape from the clutches of Aizawa's quirk. Bakugo is still also in the vicinity. He could be, I, he could be, there's three things I think Bakugo could be doing. He could either be trying to keep Gran Torino alive, keeping pressure on the wound. He could be looking to back up Deku and Endeavor at the most convenient time, or he could be looking to intercept Shigaraki's bullet if his eyes are that sharp so imagine that imagine if bakugo actually does a gran torino uh here and he he steps in the way and he takes the shot for aizawa losing his quirk that would be that would be really insane to see because bakugo i'm not sure how he'd react you know he'd he'd be the hero of the moment but bakugo is someone who's so who's so identifiable by his quirk you know his his drive to be a hero because of his quirk because of how powerful he is that that would be absolutely heartbreaking to see or 
This could all be wishful thinking, and Aizawa was about to lose his quirk, which would effectively be kind of like a death in the family. Ryukyu would just need to move her hand slightly, and the trajectory of the bullet would just com would change completely, missing Aizawa. There's so many different factors here. Makia might run in and interrupt, shaking the ground, causing Shigaraki to be like, whoa, and miss, but you know, miss with the bullet. But these last few chapters haven't shown us happy accidents or convenient saves. It's been dark, gritty reality, and Aizawa might have to face a different reality over the next few minutes. If that happens, will Shigaraki have enough energy and stamina to then use his quirks and get, get the hell out of shot? He'll definitely heal up, I think, and chances are he'll have some sort of quirk that increases his energy store based on motivation or something like that, based off of maybe sunlight or some shit like that based off a of movement maybe i don't know but this looks like a very bad situation for aizawa for the heroes in general but i really like this chapter once again quite dark quite powerful and just you know a shitstorm really to be prepared for so let me know what you guys thought of this chapter let me know what you guys thought of this review like comment subscribe all of that good stuff and i'll see you guys in a bit